Hey, what's up, folks? This is Building a Redistricting Application Part 5, the final episode, the last chapter, and probably the most boring one because what we're doing here is making a chart. Making a chart is really all about doing fiddly configuration things with a charting library. Now, there are a million different charting libraries you can use. Some make SVG charts, some make Canvas charts. Uh, some are free, some are open source, some you pay for. You, if it's a simple chart like a bar chart, you can even just roll your own with, uh, uh, you know, a, some divs. But I'm going to use chart.js. It's a canvas-based charting library, and I'm using, using it for one reason, and that's because it's the charting library I've used most recently, so I'm kind of familiar with it. All right, let's get started. We're going to install chart.js, npm install just save chart.js. Off you go. Thank you, super fast internet connection. And let's make a new component, new file, and let's call it something that's really illuminating about, you know, what this component does, chart, chart.svelte. Please, if you learn nothing from me, it's that you should name things better than I name things. So I got a, we have a chart uh, component here and we will go to our index and just drop that in. Import chart, pop chart, why not? From dollar sign lib slash chart dot svelte. We'll drop it where we have this chart one. I pop. I call it pop cart. That's that's a that's even a bad heinous naming for me. Let's fix that. And we no longer need this gray background. All right. Should we see if it see if it cranks up? npm run dev. All right. And of course, here's where our chart's gonna go. We have nothing in this component yet. So let's get started with that. We're just gonna grab some stuff I made in this little demo. Here's our containing uh, div. I call it canvas here, but you, you can just name this div with a particular ID. And let's do some scripting. We want to import our population colors from our store we want to import the chart JS of course and you do that in a funny way uh, chart JS is now tree shakeable but it's tree shakeable with elbow grease there's all these different parts of it you can import and then register with the chart and uh, that's how you would essentially sort of manually tree shake it. Uh, that's uh, life is too short for that. So we're just going to grab the whole thing just because, you know, YOLO. But another little tricky thing is where it says auto here. I've noticed that will work for development, but may not work when it builds. Depends on your build library. But what it's really getting is auto slash auto dot js. Yes, you don't really need the js part, do you? So yeah, that's that's a little bit tricky, but you just that's just something you learn when you see build errors uh, a, a few hundred times. So we got our chart. We're also just like with the map, since we're writing stuff to a DOM element. We have to make sure the DOM element is there before we start writing. So we're going to want that on mount event from Svelte, or on mount part of the Svelte component lifecycle. All right, let's go back to our little example here. We've got some data. So we have two data sets here, one for uh, 
one for the bars and one for the line. So for the bars, the data is actually going to be our population. And this is just an array of numbers, so it works out perfectly. And our colors, they'll just be an array of colors. So we should go dollar sign colors. And for this, we want the mean. And I actually screwed this formula up last time. This should have been divided by the number of districts. Uh, that's why the numbers looked a little funny. We can just grab that. We'll just make a const pop mean equals and then this little formula and stick this, oop, stick this down here. And I'm using a chart.js option that'll just fill in nulls. So we just need to have it at the beginning and end of that line. Okay, that should be our chart data. Let's go actually make our chart. We will need our on mount event. And that's where we will actually make our chart. I'll just grab this code from my code pen example. And let's get it indented properly. Get out of here, we need more space. Thank you. All right. Uh, we don't do vars anymore. I definitely copied and pasted that. Uh, const and we want the variable representing the chart to be available outside of this on mount uh, function. So let's just make, let my chart, let it be an undefined variable. Then we'll assign it for here. And I'm going to show you why that's important uh, when we go to update the data. So I think this looks good. Do you think this looks good? I think it looks good. Let's save that and see if anything exploded. Yes! Cannot read property of default. All right, it didn't like auto.js. Yeah, it, I guess it did want the JS there for some reason. Okay, we have a chart. And these are the current populations. This is why I thought it was weird when it was balanced when I, I screwed up that formula before. So, and we want to get these populations around this line. We need to fix the sizing on this. I think it's uh, uh, not there, over here. Oh, I got a new Chrome, great, let's see. Yeah, see, this this is overflowing this grid by quite a bit. We need to fix that sizing. Sizing in chart uh, JS is weird. It does like some responsive stuff, but also some aspect ratio stuff, and it can. That's weird. We're just gonna take the width out of here and give it a height of 200, and it's gonna use that for for scaling. We're gonna make a style for that ID and we're going to give the classic uh, I don't know what I'm doing with my life important to make sure the width stays the size of the container and that should probably do it yeah now it's the size of what that is if we see how it's responsive it gets bigger gets smaller, goes down to the bottom. Yeah, that's that's what we want. Now we have our sizing. We need to update the data because right now when we add things, this chart does squat. So let's fix that. And this is a little bit of Svelte inside baseball. Most of Svelte you write like JavaScript. This is not a very JavaScripty thing. And it, which irks me a little bit. I don't know how I do it differently, so I can't really criticize it. This dollar sign colon is letting Svelte know that this is going to be a statement with things in it it needs to watch. And if those things change, rerun, uh, rerun the statement. 
we're going to go if population, that is population has a value, which means it's going to run the first time this component loads. If population has value or that value changes, and if, it, if this runs the first time it loads, you're going to get an error because you can try to update the data to a chart component that doesn't exist yet. So we're also going to go and and my chart. So my chart is set. My chart won't be set until it makes a chart, which means this will run at the appropriate time and not before. Now we're going to update the data. All you do to do that is, is get your my chart and get the data and the data sets. And we set two and the first one is our bar value. We're going to set the data for that to our population. And then we have to tell the chart to update itself. Uh, I think it's just update. And now when we click on stuff, hopefully this chart will start moving. Let's see if this first bar starts growing. And look at that, it does. Perfect. We have a working chart and you need this for this population check because you don't want to just try to remember what everything is in your head. This gives you a visual clue about what you need to do to each district to get this population in line. Uh, I kind of don't like how this is spaced out. Now, now I'm just getting in the weeds. We could probably just put all of these together. Get rid of these two. Uh, that's a little better, but that's a little close. Let's get back to our chart and give this some uh, padding at the bottom. Let's say uh, margin bottom, I don't know, give it like a 10. Yeah, that's a little better. Actually, I wonder if we can just, it would look better if it was just pushed. Eh, I'm just screwing around right now. Eh, we don't need to see it. We don't need to watch any of that. What are you doing, Tobin? Okay. You want to try to fix, balance this population? You know, that's a little bit close too. I kind of, I kind of want to put, no, uh, no, 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 stop. Let's balance this population. So number one, let me make this, chart a little bigger here. So number one needs to come up. Number four and five probably needs to go down. So let's get number one can't get to four or five. So let, let's steal from this guy first. That gets the population up. Now two is way low, but it can steal from four and five here. So let's steal that one. So that, that gets four about right. And let's steal from five till we get that about right. And there we go. The population is balanced. We could submit this plan. We have redistricted. There, that makes it even look even better. Two still a little low and five still a little high. What if we? Yeah, that's even better. All right. Democracy in action. So now we've got a working chart doing all the things that we want to do. Yeah, we're, we're at this point, you can just start screwing around. You can go, well, you know, title is not the best title. We can call this redistricting for the democracy 2020, because that's, that's what else would you name this? Let's give it some, a little margin to space it out a little bit. Got something that just says footer. You can go copy wrong uh, because reasons. You know, you, yeah, now you're just now you're just polishing the apple. But we are we're good for redistricting. We have a district selection control map with a hover and a click event. We've got our population checks, both the logic and displaying those on the, on the screen. We have a chart to help people get with the population check.
make sure our, we haven't broken our, our contiguity looks contiguity check is also working everything's working all I need to do now is build this sucker so we can exit out of our development server and go npm run build and off it goes it's going to build our chunks and our minifying and tree shaking and all of that happy jazz and now you'll have a build folder and you can take the contents of this build folder and just throw it on your web server and you are you have saved democracy so good job i'm going to put this code on github just if anyone wants it as a reference and you can feel free to play around with it and that was fun Ooh, bonus you want to see something neat let's go to uh Workspace code read districting uh, This is so old. Th this was my redistricting app from 10 years ago. It's so old it uses default.htm instead of index.html. Let's see, default.htm. Great commissioner plan. This cracks me up. This is the redistricting tool from a decade ago, and it's doing some different checks, different things. But because this is before I got into, I don't even know if 10 years ago Node was a thing. It's before I got into all that and all these modern build tools, and it's just plain JavaScript and HTML. But because of that, I can just crank up a web server and it still works. And what kills me the most is these charts are using the Google charting API from 10 years ago and it still works. Blast from the past. Look at that. Sure, sure, it's you could you could say it's ugly and you'd be right, but yeah, it still works. I think I have that code out there somewhere too. I can't remember where. I'm sure it's somewhere. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Uh, good luck with redistricting in whatever jurisdiction you're in. It's uh, an interesting technical project and a heinous sort of people management project because, you know, politician. So good luck. Catch you later. Bye-bye.